Hi everyone, welcome back to How to Train Your Cabin. There might be some kind of echo in here too because I'm in my kitchen and I'm about to make my first ever cocktail. I've never made a cocktail myself before and it's been that long since I've had a cocktail inside of me. I also am wearing my hoodie and I will be doing my snuggly support sprints tonight. Well, in approximately... 50 minutes and I have nothing set up for a crap. So yeah, I have my snuggly support sprints tonight. I do them every Monday. It's really fun. So I wanted to make strawberry daiquiris for this reading sprint because I'm always really hot when I'm having hot drinks. So I'm having cold drinks. Anyway, I am doing an Enneagram reading vlog. Now, if you don't know what an Enneagram is, it is this like nine point structure. And don't worry, it took me a while to wrap my head around it. I probably won't explain it very well in this video, but it is a nine point structure where it gives you your personality type. So you can do tests online to find out what type you are. I only did mine because Lexi guessed that I would be a two. And I'm like, how fucking rude, I'm obviously a 10. <laughs> so as it turns out, I am a two. Lexi was right. Not just a two, I'm a two wing three. So the two is the helper and the three is the achiever, which I do think I fit pretty well. And if you want any more information on Enneagrams, I will leave links in the description box because I'm still wrapping my head around it. But one of the big inspirations, one of the big reasons why I'm doing this course is because Kayla from Books and Lala, she did a reading like my Enneagram video recently and she did her own research. She did a blog post on booksandlala.com. I will link that in the description box too. But essentially she asked lots of different people their Enneagram types as well as a link to their Goodreads. And then she went through them all and she saw a pattern between certain Enneagram types and their favorite books. And she has a list of four books per type. They're not her recommendations, it's just like her research and what she's found. So with me being an Enneagram type two, there are four books that she noticed is a recurring pattern among type twos. And I have never read any of these books, so I am a terrible two. So the four books that are for type twos are The Diviners by Libba Bray, Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Marina Garcia, and The Hedder Wars by Adiba Jagrada. So I now have 45 minutes before my sprints and I still need to set up. So I'm gonna make my cocktail now. And I know a lot of people after my Mamma Mia reading vlog where I got demonetized for two months because of my bad singing or something, I don't know. You guys wanted to see a cocktails and cock talk segment. Now I Googled it and apparently cocktails and cock talk is a blog. So I can't use that. So I was thinking maybe dicks and daiquiris. So I'm making my own frozen strawberry daiquiri. And I think I'm gonna do such a phenomenal job here. Well, all the ingredients. So come on closer. I will show you how to make a frozen strawberry daiquiri or how not to make it, depends on how this goes. Um, so what I need is, I will probably do the measurements first. I've got white rum, um, sugar, syrup, lime juice, frozen strawberries, and fresh strawberries. I don't have ice because the ice dilutes the flavor. So frozen strawberries is the way to go, apparently. So I will do the measurements first. So for white rum, I have to use 120 ml of white rum. So 120. I mean, I don't know how many servings this is. Probably, I think it says serves eight. Okay, that's all right. Uh, so I'll oh, have what was it again? 100. 120, 120, let's see how this goes. Oh, this feels like a lot for one person, to be honest. Pop it straight in, I guess. 60 ml of lime juice. This is actually really exciting, I'm so excited. Oh, 60 ml, oh, it, even, it only goes up to 100. I'm just gonna have to guess, I don't even think you can see it. Ugh. It's very thick. Right, I think that's probably 60 mil. Pop that in there. And then um, the sugar syrup is 30 mil. 30 mil? That sounds about right. Let's have a look. 30 mil. I can't tell if it's 30 mil or not. I really can't. Probably that. I don't want to put too much in because it's syrup. But uh, plus I didn't check the camera angles. So I don't know if you can actually see anything. So 250 grams of frozen strawberries. Oh, yay, and they don't have the um, green stuff on the top, that's good. <laughs> you guys can't say shit. 250 grams with 184. Oh my god, this is actually quite a lot of strawberries for one person. 252, that'll do. Actually, I'll take one, one out. Oh, no one else says minus 33? What? No. Start again. Have I done this completely wrong? S stop. Oh. 300? Jesus Christ. No wonder it looks like too many. 266, 248, that'll do. 
That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. I don't know if my blender will actually work well with frozen stuff. I've never actually tried. And then 60 grams of fresh... Oh, Jesus, that is quite a lot of strawberries, isn't it? 60. Oh, wait, that's one. Wait, hang on. How is that... That's 54 grams for one strawberry. How have I put all that in? Oh, I've done something wrong. I bet you something's wrong here. I'll just put the one strawberry in. Oh, crap. I've got a leaf in it. So that's fine, right? I think that's it. Place all ingredients in the blender. Blitz and tilt all the strawberries on this. Oh, God. This is where I am terrified. I am terrified. What if it doesn't actually blend the strawberries? What if it doesn't blend the frozen strawberries? What if it's not powerful enough? Oh. Okay. I don't know why, but it just doesn't look too right. Okay, here we go. Oh my god, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Okay, let's let's try it. Okay, it doesn't actually say how long to blend it for. But that looks blitzed, right? It looks it looks good. Ah, oh, that looks so good. But, oh God, there's a lot of seeds in there. Was I supposed to take the seeds out? That's just a little bit more. Okay, that should be fine. I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's all I had to do. So let's, let's pour it in a glass. Yeah, I think it smells like a strawberry taco. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit lumpy. I may as well pour it. Is this just one serving? Something's wrong here. I've done something wrong here. Wow, look at that though. That's definitely, that's definitely lumpy. I definitely should have kept it in a bit longer. So let's garnish it with a strawberry on top. These are huge. Can I just do this? There we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. That looks amazing. Does it, okay. We'll do a taste test because I'm not convinced. Oh my God, doesn't that look so good though? Look at this, look at this. Right, even if this tastes like shit, it will take such a good photo. Let's have a look, let's, let's try it. Oh, it's strong. It tastes nice, but it's really strong. But it does taste really good. Oh my God, I'm so happy. I've done my first ever daiquiri. <laughs> God, I feel so classy right now. Um, so I need to go and set up for my snuggly reading sprints. I'm gonna pick my first book to read. I will chat to you upstairs and uh, bon appetit. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. I should be a cocktail person. Honestly, the hardest part of this right now is not drinking it before the live because I want everybody to see this but I really want to drink it. Honestly, it is really, really nice. It is just really, really strong. I do realise I put in probably a bit too much because I was going by what is required for eight people, not one, so. <laughs> so I have decided on which book I want to read first. I'm going with the shortest one first because I kind of want to start it and finish it during my reading sprints. So I do have all these on audiobook. I haven't listened to an audiobook in so long and I'm just desperate to read. <laughs> I've been struggling with reading quite a bit this kind of month. I've just been forcing myself to read physically and everything that I have audiobook wise just didn't jump at me so I'm glad I have this kind of set list during this world it gives me some purpose yeah I will be starting off with the henna wars and it says this one is when the shark comes out to her parents they say she can be anyone she wants as long as she isn't herself because Muslim girls aren't lesbians Nishat doesn't want to hide who she is, but she also doesn't want to lose her relationship with her family. And her life only gets harder once her childhood friends walk back into her life. Flavia is beautiful and charismatic, and Nishat falls for her instantly. But when a school competition invites students to create their own businesses, both Flavia and Nishat choose to do henna, even though Flavia is appropriating Nishat's culture. Amidst sabotage and school stress, their lives get more tangled, but Nishat can't get rid of her crush on Flavia, and realises there may be more to her than she realised. Sounds absolutely amazing. Cannot wait to start it. I will be hopefully starting it and finishing it during the sprints. So I didn't actually finish the Henna Wars during my reading sprints, but that's absolutely fine. I ended up going on Christine at Any Endings as live sprints, and I managed to finish it off during those. I was up until like 3 a.m. I'm an insomniac anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think I'll give you my rating of the book after I talk about it so that you can see if the curated recommendation fits me as a type 2. So I don't read a lot of contemporary 
contemporary at the best of times and I've only read really a handful but I really enjoyed The Henna Wars. I really enjoyed The Henna Wars. So I should probably mention that this reading vlog will be entirely spoiler free for all of the books that I read. So don't worry about any spoilers. Anything I mention will be common knowledge or things that were mentioned on the blurb. With The Henna Wars, I related so much to the main character, Anisha. She ends up coming out to her parents relatively early on in the book. This is told in first person. And you can tell that through how scared Anisha is to come out, but she has to, to sort of live her truth. And I just admire her bravery so, so much and her courage to even just approach her parents about it. I could not imagine. I mean, I say I relate to Nisha. I cannot imagine how much harder it was for her, especially coming out to Muslim parents. And I'm quite privileged that when I came out, I didn't have to come out to religious parents. I mean, saying that though, my dad did have a bit of a hissy fit about me being gay. But we're not here for the coming out story of me. We're here for the coming out story of Nisha. So anyway, she ends up connecting with a girl called Flavia. And I I do... Okay, I, I have such mixed feelings about it because I absolutely love their chemistry, their relationship and things. It's hard to talk without spoilers. But she doesn't make the best decisions when it comes to sort of siding with Nishat on some things. She does end up coming around to siding with Nishat on some things but it's like she does say some things going on and she doesn't really intervene even though she's supposed to be a really good friend to Nisha. She doesn't really intervene that much. Not until we get to like the end of the book. So I was a little bit eh, about it to begin with. However, I've just got one line for you right now that just sums this up beautifully, but I love the smell of henna. Oh my gosh, I love it, I love it. So yeah, as you can probably tell, I got on board with the romance of this book and it was just, yeah, it was just so cute and pure and I think this is probably younger and young adult. We have another girl in this called China and I really didn't like her and she does drive this wedge between Nisha and Flavia. So I feel like, yeah, we're not really supposed to like her anyway, that's fine. She isn't just uh, like a, a cardboard bully. Is that the right word? Like a caricature of a bully? She's a lot more complex than that. And the main plot of this book really is that they've been assigned to start their own business at school. And Nisha and Flavia have both decided to do henna designs for their businesses. Except for Flavia, that is cultural appropriation. And Nisha wants to fight that. It's made even worse the fact that Nisha has already come out to her parents. So she's dealing with so much at home. A lot of the scenes between Nisha and her mother really broke my heart. And especially since it, I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> Nisha being a lesbian is definitely something that makes her mother see her differently. It's not readily accepted. So that is something that she ends up having to navigate this competition with her best friend, who is somebody she has feelings for. It's a lot goes on, a lot goes on in that. So I really, really enjoyed those aspects of it. But as I said, I don't really read a lot of contemporary. It's not really 100% my thing. However, the romance and everything, it was just top tier. So I think I'm going to settle with a 4.5 star with this one. While it's not one of my favourite books, I would say it's one of my favourite contemporaries. Again, just because I haven't really read a whole lot of them, but it was just, there was so much wholesome content in this. There was quite a lot of depth to this as well with the exploration of sexuality, especially given religion, being involved in that too. And I just really wanted to see where the plot would go as well. And I was not disappointed. I thought it was done really well. People compare this book to Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and that's one of the worst books I've ever read. So the fact that I really love The Henna Wars, it just shows you the boundary I had to leap over for a certain plot point that happens in this book. I thought it was done rather well in this one and not so much in Simon Verse. I'm sorry to all the Simon Verses fans out there. So yeah, 4.5 stars for The Henna Wars and that is one book down, three more to go. I could not count that, I was about to say four. 
So I didn't actually realize this, but the Diviners has been out for quite some time. So I didn't actually realize this, but the Diviners has been out for quite some time. And it's part of a series. It's the first in a series. 2012. Like, that was like nine years ago. Oh my god. But let's find out what it's about. Because I've seen it around before. I've just never taken to the plot. I just have no idea what it's about. So it says here, Evie O'Neill has been exiled from her boring old hometown and shipped off to the bustling streets of New York City. And she is positively ecstatic. It's 1920s. Ooh, 1926. I love the setting then. And New York is filled with speakeasies, Ziegfeld girls, and rackish pickpockets. I don't want to struggle reading this book, aren't I? I can't even fucking read it. Well, actually, no, I'm listening to the audiobook again, so it should be okay. <laughs> the only catch is that she has to live with her uncle Will and his unhealthy obsession with the occult. Ooh. Evie worries her uncle will discover her darkest secret, a supernatural power that has only brought her trouble so far. But when the police find a murdered girl branded with a cryptic symbol and Will is called to the scene, Evie realises her gift could help catch a serial killer. As Evie jumps headlong into a dance with a murderer, other stories unfold in the city that never sleeps. A young man named Memphis is caught between two worlds. A chorus girl named Theta is running from her past. A student named Jericho is hiding a shocking secret, and unknown to all, something dark and evil has awakened. That sounds really great, actually. That sounds more my street. Sounds like fantasy, a little bit historical, because it's set during the Roaring Twenties. Oh my god, that was like 100 years ago now. But I love that time period, so I'm excited to dive into this one, so I will um, catch you later. Well, I didn't realise this at the time, but I actually went from the shortest book on this TBR to the longest book on this TBR, and boy, did I feel it. So I actually had a day off yesterday, and I didn't read anything. I did finish The Diviners yesterday, and it's, well, it's Friday now, but tonight is the start of the 48-hour bookopolathon, so that means I'm going to have to hit pause on this reading vlog so that I can read A Court of Frost and Starlight and A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass for the bookopolathon, and I will be doing a 48-hour weekend reading vlog for it, so I'm really excited for that. But I am going to try and cram in as much of my next read for this vlog before midnight hits. And I do have about six and a half hours until then, actually, and both of the next books are not as long as The Diviners because, wow, it was a long audiobook. But to be fair, I spent most of it just kind of listening to it with my face mask on and just lying down. <laughs> That's just pretty much how I listen to all audiobooks, <laughs> to be honest. So I want to talk about the positive stuff in The Diviners, and I will say that I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good first book in a series. There was a lot that happened. There were a lot of lulls in the story, but I felt connected enough with the, well, the universe, the story that was going on, that I was really interested to see where the story would progress. And it did feel very, I kind of want to say like X-Men-ish, because the Diviners are people with powers. And I mean, not like X-Men kind of powers, but say Evie, our main character, she can read an object's history when she touches them. And I found that like such a really great part of her because it kind of led to the conflict that happened at the start with her, like this incident happened that forces her to move to New York City, which was a really great way to open this book and to open us up with these characters. And although saying that though, we do meet Sam relatively early on, and I wasn't the biggest fan of Sam. He is a pickpocket and I think he's kind of explained a little bit better later on, but the way he and Evie first interact just with all the conversations that are going on at the minute with the murder of Sarah Everard, it just, oh, it, I found it so creepy in like, probably the creepiest part of this book in, in, in a totally human way was the Sam at the start. Like, honestly, I cannot get over how creepy he was. I mean, no spoilers. Again, there's no spoilers whatsoever. But there is a way that men can be so vile with women. And Sam was definitely that way with Evie when she first arrived. He did have a reason because he pickpockets her. And that was why he was very interested in her. Which, I mean, to begin with, I was like, well, why is he so fixated on her? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. It just went under my skin. It really did. So I can't get on board with Sam. I'm not going to lie. Just the way he was introduced, I hated it. He does have a storyline that is quite interesting by the end of it. Like, it does ramp up the intrigue for his character. 
I, I, I just don't like him. <laughs> it's the problem. I just don't really like him, I'm afraid. Evie, I did love. She was very courageous and so determined as well. She did not let things keep her back. She just went for it. She's very adventurous and I love that in my protagonist. She was just so great. Oh, nice. It's raining now. I did like Mabel in Memphis as well. A lot of the characters I just didn't really gel with. I think that it might be because of the audiobook maybe. I don't know. It just, I didn't connect with them as much as I did with say Evie. So I mean I'm glad I found Evie because like she was great. But the main reason why I really enjoyed this book, I mean actually two main reasons I think, and one of them is the setting in the 1920s. Phenomenal. And also the storyline with Naughty John. And oh, although saying that though, if I hear Naughty John, Naughty John goes to work with his eight Bring on one more fucking time. One more time. Oh, I was ready. I was ready to rip my headphones out and throw them across the room. Oh god, the amount of times that was said. It was really creepy to begin with. It was. I will give it that. But after the 50th time it was said, I was like, nah, nah. You know when something's supposed to be really creepy and scary and it's supposed to get under your skin, but you hear it that many times and you see it that often, it just gets on your nerves instead? The Naughty John song was one of them, seriously. But however, I did love his introduction. I loved, because this happens like right at the start, so again, no spoilers, but right at the start there was like this Ouija board, um, seance kind of thing, and that was really creepy. <laughs> the only thing though is because I was listening to the audiobook, when the letters were being spelled out, there's a moment where a lot of letters are getting spelled out and I lost track and I had no clue I had no fucking clue what the hell they just spelled out so it was really funny because like the narrator goes really fast because the the board thing's going really fast and it's just like ABC but you know what I mean it was just like it was too fast for me but there is this whole storyline with Noe John killing people and there is I think about 10 victims and he ends up taking limbs and things from the victims so one of them he takes their hands another one he takes their feet, their skin. It was really creepy and sometimes very gross. Some of the descriptions were quite gross and I, I really liked that. I really enjoyed that because it just, it felt so atmospheric with the 1920s setting because it was just, I, I love the 1920s in general. I love that era. The Roaring Twenties, I love the imagery of it and everything. So to add all of the murders that were happening at the same time with the descriptions of like the bodies and what was happening and the suspense and the tension, it was... It was really great for me. I don't know if it's because I don't really read thrillers, but I will, I will. I'll be reading more thrillers this year. And the only horrors I've really read are Stephen King, which is standard, and Off Season by Jack Ketchum, which I've mentioned so many times, but again, that one freaked me out and I still think about it. And I read it a year ago. You know, that really, really scared me, it terrified me. So I don't know if that helps because this is definitely more fantasy. It's more kind of like paranormal, murder detective kind of book. So like the intrigue was really high and it was just really well built I thought. So yeah I love the suspense, I love the tension, the storyline was definitely probably one of my <laughs> definitely probably was definitely my favourite part of the book. So I found it such a great first book in a series. I will most likely continue on. I do have about 550 books on my TBR already though so when I get to the next books who knows but I really did enjoy the ending. There were so many character moments that was building up. It's very rare for me to give a five star to the first in a series so I'm not giving it five stars and I'm actually going to give it four stars. I think this one is a solid four star read. It's been dragged down a little bit because a lot of the times I felt myself a little bit dejected from the story. Just my intrigue just went down and then it would go up and then down again. It was very all over the place for me. It's still great. I, I'm not faulting it too much for that but also just the repetition of the fucking Naughty John thing honestly it, it started to piss me off. That is that one done. So that's two down and two more to go. So I have a choice now between two books and one of them I've already forgotten what the hell it is. No teacher, no teacher. Goes to work with his apron. I mean, to be fair, it is rather catchy. <laughs> it is rather catchy. Oh, Stalk and Jack the Ripper, yes. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to read Stalk and Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco next because it's the, like, it's shorter than Mexican Gothic. So Stalk and Jack the Ripper is nine and a half hours, which is not too bad. I've got like six hours until the start of Bucoplathon, so that's not too bad. I can get most of it read today and then just put pause on it and then 
continue again next week. So for Salt and Jack the Ripper, it's the one I've heard the most about, but again, I can't remember what it's about. <laughs> so it says here, 17-year-old Audrey Rose Wadsworth was born a Lord's daughter with a life of wealth and privilege stretched out before her, but between the social tees and silk dress fittings, she leads a forbidden secret life. Against her stern father's wishes and society's expectations, Audrey often slips away to her uncle's laboratory to study the gruesome practice of forensic medicine. When her work on a string of savagely killed corpses as drag Audrey into the investigation of a serial murderer, her search for answers brings her close to her own sheltered world. What I'm realising about this, like, well, with the Diviners and then this one, I guess type twos are really into serial killers, because Naughty John killed a lot of people, and then now we have Stoke and Jack the Ripper, which actually, just judging from the title, I should have known that. Why did I not know that from the title, for God's sake? I mean, I'm really excited to read it anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and do that. So I'm here after a weekend off from doing this reading vlog. I did the entire 48 hour bookopolathon. I mean, I didn't stay awake for all of it, but I only slept for, I think, a total of eight hours over the entire weekend. And that's like from Friday morning. So technically like three days I've had eight hours sleep. And I was up until 6.30 a.m. this morning because it is Monday. So I'm using today to recover from what the fuck just happened over the weekend. <laughs> So I do actually have the reading vlog for the entire weekend up on my channel now. I do read A Court of Frost and Starlight and A Court of Silver Flames for that reading vlog. And I put a lot of the highlights from the weekend in there as well, not just about the books, but you know, the live shows that I did because I did end up doing three live shows and it was just chaos. It was mayhem. The vlog is chaos and mayhem. And you know what? I couldn't have asked for a better weekend. <laughs> I had three glasses of wine in three live shows. I threw up. I laughed so hard that I gave myself headaches. And today I have a headache today as well from laughing from what happened over the last few days. So honestly, I just need to sort myself out. I cancelled the snuggly support sprints that was supposed to happen tonight because honestly, I do feel quite rough still. The sour candies that me and Lexi tasted on the live show, the slumber party we did, my tongue has not really felt right since. So I've ate a few things, but they just haven't really tasted right. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> So it was a barrel of laughs until, you know, I threw up in the toilet, but you know. So I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to get back into this reading vlog. I am in the middle of Stalking Jack the Ripper. I started the audio book on Friday and I got around about halfway through, but then I did have to put pause on it. I never ever stop reading a book to read something else and then go back to that book. I've never ever done that before. At least not that I can remember. I don't make a habit of doing that. And honestly, like, I'm trying to recall a lot of my thoughts on this book, and I'm having a bit of a hard time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I am listening to the audiobook, I'm going to go back a couple of chapters, say if anything jogs my memory. I do know what's happened, I just don't have a lot of feelings on it right now. And that's because, you know, I have just read a huge Sarah J Maas book, for one, and it, like, I'm still thinking about that one, and I just need to get back into this. I listened to the audiobook after I finished this update, and I want to try my best to immerse myself back into that world. From what I remember, I did really enjoy Audrey's banter with Thomas, and I'm liking Audrey as a character a lot. She is very driven, and I found the exact same thing with the main protagonist from The Diviners. they feel rather similar and I like their drive and their individuality. So what I am enjoying the most is characters in this one and that's usually what I do gravitate towards. The story so far as well has been very interesting. There have been, you know, murders and we are following Audrey. She's usually helping her uncle at the laboratory where they look at dead bodies and she's very fascinated by dead bodies. I don't know if maybe that is a clue to something. Like, I don't know if maybe I'm reading too much into that, but I don't, I don't know. Like, she seems very morbidly interested and I mean, fair play to you. It's like not my cup of tea. I mean, dead body, no. Fair play to her if that's what she's into. Yeah, oh, you know what? The more I'm talking about it, the more it's coming back to me. So there's like actually quite a lot of talk about gender and especially about Audrey being a woman and kind of being limited to being able to do things. So she is expected to be very frivolous and very fanciful, but she is really just really interested in helping her uncle with like the dead bodies. So it's, I mean, not in a sadistic way, I probably explained that really wrong, but yeah, he's just like, he, he isn't killing people. 
from what I know. But uh, they do look at dead bodies. I think he's some kind of like mortician. Is that what you call them? And Audrey is trying to piece together what is happening to the the young women who are being killed. And Thomas is there as well. And he's very arrogant. I kind of like it. <laughs> kind of like it though. And Audrey as well. She just doesn't put up with it. She is. She gives as good as she gets. So I'm enjoying that. But yeah, I'm interested to see where the story will develop. I am sorry. I've been such a mess today. I was supposed to make stir fry. But I ended up ordering a Domino's pizza instead. I can't process today. I can't not. So yeah, I'm going to go listen to the audiobook. Christine from Any Endings is actually doing a reading sprint tonight, so I will jump on that. I will definitely tune in for that and try and read during that too. Hopefully I can finish Stoke and Jack the Ripper tonight and then read the final book tomorrow and Wednesday and get this up on Thursday. Who knows? So this will be really good. Like I'm just enjoying myself. I love the challenge. So let's see if I end up loving this book. You know, I was sitting right there, don't you? Honestly, the disrespect. So I've been delegated at the bottom of the bed and I have managed to finish Stoke and Jack the Ripper and I did that pretty much at the end of Christine's live sprints last night, but honestly, I was dead to the world by the end of that sprint, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna put you down so I can, uh... Oh, hang on. That's too, that's too low down. <laughs> so yeah, it had a really thrilling ending for Stoke and Jack the Ripper, one that I didn't really anticipate and I wasn't too sure who Jack the Ripper would be. I don't read thrillers or mysteries like very often or at all, so I'm, you know, automatically suspicious of every single character just going into it, you know, just in case. And I don't even think that I could have worked it out. I don't think it was obvious. I mean, I'm saying it's not obvious to me. It might have been obvious to anybody who's read Stoke and Jack the River, but I did not see it coming. So I really loved how it all came together. And especially, I, I mean, again, it's a spoiler-free vlog, but it definitely helped to develop some relationships in the book. <laughs> Honestly, skirting around spoilers is literally the hardest thing a booktuber has to do. So I would 100% say that I did really enjoy Stoking Jack the Ripper. It was very much like The Diviners. Like, I got the same kind of vibes from The Diviners. I mean, The Diviners was supernatural. Stoking Jack the Ripper was not. But just with characters and even, like, writing style and the way the world is painted, it did come across as quite similar. And I can totally see why it would be a lot of Type 2's favourites, because if you enjoy The Diviners, I think you would enjoy Soap and Jack the Ripper. But the mystery was really good. It kept me going for the entire time. So I would say I'm going to give Soap and Jack the Ripper four stars. I haven't come across a favourite yet, but we still have one shot at this, and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I have really high hopes for this one, because out of all of the ones that was part of this reading vlog, it was the one that I'd seen the most of, the one that I was more interested in reading. Again, I'm just going to read the description because I would butcher telling you what it's about. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from a mysterious doom, Noemi Taboada heads to a high place, a distant house in the Mexican countryside. She She's not sure what she will find. Her cousin's husband, a handsome Englishman, is a stranger and Noemi knows little about the region. Noemi is also an unlikely rescuer. She's a glamorous dubatante. Oh my god, I cannot say words. I can't pronounce shit. 
She's a glamorous debutante and her chic gowns and perfect red lipstick are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. But she's also tough and smart with an indomitable will and she's not afraid. Not of her cousin's new husband, who is both menacing and alluring. Not of his father, the ancient patriarch, who seems to be fascinated by Noemi. And not even of the house itself, which begins to invade Noemi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. That sounds perfect. So yeah, it does look really good. I'm really excited to read this one. I have high hopes. I have high, high hopes for the living. So I'm going to go and read that one. And hopefully, hopefully... I can just spend the day reading it. I feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. Yesterday was a total day of recovery. Today is, I, I feel rejuvenated. I feel ready. I feel ready. So let's do this. Let's go for our final book for this reading vlog. <laughs> currently 1.21 a.m. and I've done it. I managed to finish Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia and whew, what a book, am I right? I should let you know, I adore Gothic fiction and I wrote my dissertation on the Gothic in Anne Radcliffe's books, specifically The Mysteries of Udolfo and The Italian, which I'm sure a lot of you guys probably already know because I've mentioned that a few times. <laughs> dissertation. <laughs> so any kind of book, whether it's written way back when or now, if it has gothic elements, I'm gonna love it. So as you can probably tell, I did actually end up loving Mexican gothic. Honestly, it was the atmosphere for me. It just, oh, it just enveloped me. The fact that we ended up going to High Place, which is the place where our main character Noemi goes when she is trying to help her cousin. There's this like huge storyline that goes on. It gets really weird. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it does get a little bit weird. But I kind of liked that. It was definitely unexpected. It took turns I just did not expect. It's one that you have to be really, really patient for because the pacing, it is a bit slow going, but I think it really works for this kind of book. It just meant that it could add to that atmosphere that I keep raving about. But it does have this slow burn kind of thing going on, which honestly, it did really ramp up the suspense for me. It was, I mean... Saying that, it does have all of the gothic elements that I loved from something like The Mysteries of Udolfo. It did get a bit direct with the horror, whereas like something like The Mysteries of Udolfo, it was more like you didn't know if it was real or not, and it was more subtle. But this, it's more like obvious horror. I don't know how to explain it really, but it was very... Like, there was some shocking parts and some of it was actually quite gruesome and terrifying, which honestly I did love. I did really like when it would get a little bit gory and the dreams and all of that. It was so, it was just so suspenseful. Beautifully written as well. I mean, the descriptions of High Place itself were, I was going to chef's kiss again there, but I think I've chef kissed enough. So I do think it kept true to it, the gothic roots of the, the genre, but it did pave its own path by, I get, probably like the halfway mark. It started to really come into its own. And it was just beautifully described. What more can I say about that? The setting as well with it being set in the 50s. Actually, I've noticed a pattern here with the type two Enneagram type uh, favorites is that they all had pretty strong female main protagonists, which honestly, all of them, all of them so far have been great. I loved each and every one of them. They've all been historical too. Apart from the Henna Wars. So Diviners and Stoke and Jack the Ripper and Mexican Gothic set in the past, so the 50s setting of Mexican Gothic, it added more to the isolation. Setting this in the 50s was definitely, I think, the best choice, because if it was set in the present day, there would have just been so much more help available, but it just felt way more isolating, 
for Noemi in this book because of the setting. It just, it added to it. Like, I love a book where it utilises its setting and it doesn't just set itself there just to say it's set there. This one, it, it really grabs that time period by the balls. And it was probably one of my favourite parts. So definitely the atmosphere and the setting were two of my favourite parts about this book. And Noemi, of course, yeah, she is a great protagonist. Again, very driven. All of the main protagonists have been pretty similar in the fact that they are driven characters. I don't know how else to describe them. I'm not giving this one a five star though, because it did get a little bit weird. <laughs> it did get a little bit weird and I couldn't really follow for some of it. I was just lying there doing nothing listening to the audiobook, so I wasn't distracted or anything. Yeah, I, it just divulged a lot. <laughs> And it got, yeah, mm, I don't know, like, it was really, really great, but I just wasn't sure of how it ended. Maybe around about Halloween time, I might give this one a reread, and I'll reread it physically as well, just to see if I change my opinion on it. I, yeah, there was just something about it that just prevents me from giving it a five star. I can't quite put my finger on it. I can't quite give it the five. For this book, I'm going to give it a 4.5. And it's pretty on par with The Henna Wars for me for being one of my favourites of the week. I didn't care for the romance really. And there are quite a few trigger warnings in this too. It's It can be very dark, very heavy. So please bear that in mind when you go into it. I think maybe it's just because this isn't my typical genre now. I mean, I know I just said I wrote a dissertation on gothic. I mean that was gothic written hundreds of years ago. This is a present day written gothic novel that came out last year. So I'm definitely seeing it as different. But I did get the Daphne du Maurier, Rebecca vibes from this and I was living for that. I was. So definitely one of my favourites of the week at least. I mean it's been a little over a week now though really. I was trying to get it into a week but you know, things happen. So to wrap up this week and to talk about how this experiment thing kind of panned out for me, we had The Henna Wars, which I gave 4.5 stars. We had The Diviners, which I gave 4 stars. We had Stork and Jack the Ripper, which I gave 4 stars. Finally, Mexican Gothic, which I gave 4.5 stars. None of them were 5 stars. Mexican Gothic and The Henna Wars came pretty close, but I think because they're books that I typically wouldn't read, I couldn't quite give them that 5 star. I think in a few years time, maybe when my tastes develop and I get better at reading, then maybe I will push those up. The Stop and Jack the Ripper and The Diviners I think will definitely stay at a 4 star, but The Henna Wars and Mexican Gothic are the two that I'm struggling with the most, because I kind of do want to give them both 5 stars, but at the same time, I wouldn't call them my favourites. I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. <laughs> so then I guess in conclusion, I didn't really find a new favourite, so I guess I'm not really like those other type twos. But it was really interesting to see that these books are a lot of type twos favourite books, just judging from Kayla's research into their Goodreads favourite shelves. And I can see why I enjoyed all of them. I didn't give any of them lower than four star, which is incredible. It's very rare for me to do a reading vlog, where all of the books I've read are great and I enjoyed them all. I genuinely did enjoy each and every one. The ones that are the first in a series, so The Diviners and Stalk and Jack the Ripper, I would continue those series. That's how much I enjoyed them. And there was different things I took from each one. It was definitely characters that I was more drawn towards in all of them. And I find it interesting that I actually ended up loving all of the main characters in these books. They are probably some of my favourite characters that I've read so far this year. So I guess that is something, I guess maybe as a type two, that I found myself gravitating towards. As well as the atmosphere of, say, the Diviners and Mexican Gothic. Even Stop and Jack the Ripper. They were so atmospheric and I ate that shit up. So I thought this was a really successful experiment. If you ask me personally, I really do. I guess that is the end of the vlog and I honestly had a blast. So thank you so much Kayla for doing that research into the Enneagram types and having that incredible blog post, which I will of course link down below so everybody else can have a little look at that too and maybe try this themselves. And I'm going to feel a little bit lost now. I have no purpose now. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've read any of these books and if you enjoyed them as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.